What's going on guys? Welcome to Steve Does Stuff. I'm Steve and today we're going to be doing some truck stuff. We are going to be doing a coolant flush and replacement on my 2016 GMC Canyon. It's got a 3.6 liter V6, the LFX, so the early model, and it's time. Looking up online and through the owner's manual, it says roughly five years or about 240,000 kilometers. Currently my truck's at about 196 but it is over five years old and if we're going into another winter again it's probably time to replace it i think after a while the coolant can actually become corrosive and start to eat away at the seals and everything so i got a free weekend so i figured i might as well do it and i'll show you guys how i'm going to do it so for the actual flush we are going to be using distilled water from canadian tire don't want to use tap water because it contains all sorts of minerals and solids Apparently it's bad for the cooling system. I use it in the drift car all the time, but I don't really care about that. So we're gonna be using distilled water to flush out the system. And then we are going with the mix your own orange flavor Dex Cool. So this is concentrated Dex Cool. So we're gonna dilute it 50-50 with some of this. We got a pretty scientific method of doing it. We got a bucket and that's about it. So the cooling system capacity on the 3.6 liter V6 for the Colorado Canyons is about 12.4 liters. So we're gonna drain all of that out and fill it up full of distilled water, run it up to temperature until it circulates through the motor and the thermostat opens, drain that back out. And then we're gonna mix some concentrated Dex Cool with the deionizer distilled water. And then we're gonna fill the system back up, burp it and be done. So the first thing we gotta do is get the truck up on a level surface. Let's do it. I got this with a TV mount kit. It's magnetic, works beautifully on the frame. Well, what do you know? Truck's already level, isn't that handy? The driveway is apparently much more level than I thought, which is great. Also, you guys might notice things look a little bit different in here. We are in the process of moving. So drift car is gone, most of the tools are gone, and we're gonna be moving out in a month into a new spot. So this is probably the last video that I'm gonna shoot here. So sad times. Now the truck's up on a level surface, which I mean, I guess it was parked on a level surface. We're gonna need to take off the bottom valence. So underneath the truck, there is this valence here. It's held in place by four 15 millimeter bolts, either side, two at the front, two at the back. Now it's also worth noting, on my truck, I don't have a chin spoiler at all. I took it off before we went on the road trip across Canada. So if you have that on here and you basically just parked your truck on a level surface, you're not gonna be able to get under here because chin spoiler hangs down a bunch. Taking it off for the road trip, I'm thinking I'm gonna put it back on, but I'm not 100% convinced. But anyway, let's get this thing off. Light? Ah! I guess this is a present from our uh, friends at Mr. Lube. Thanks, guys. Oh no. So this bottom cover came off pretty easily, and uh, I found a light in there, which did work for a second. And around the road trip, I got my oil changed in Victoria on Vancouver Island and Mr. Lube for the first time in my life. This must be a little present from them. It's even got a charger on it? Oh, it does. Micro USB. Well, I'm gonna charge this up while we work away here because I'm not gonna turn my nose down at a free light. Oh, we got lightage, bonus. So I think it's probably been in there for about 6,000 kilometers. So with the chin splitter being off, I made the decision to take that off before we went out west on a road trip because I didn't want it to get ground off on rocks or get ripped off or anything. Uh, internet scientists and know-it-alls and uh, you know people, keyboard warriors online will say that it'll overheat your truck. I did notice the trans temps were a little hot going across the prairies. For reference, I tow my drift car with this thing. Drift car is about 6,000 pounds on the trailer. I do about 110, 115 with it. And my trans temps are usually around 70 odd degrees. With all the gear in the truck for the truck camper, we were maybe about 15 to 2,000 pounds of gear, plus a big toolie on the top. Going across the prairies into a headwind at 130 kilometers an hour, I was seeing trans temps close to 80, and I'd have to slow down. Also in the mountains going up and down, I got up to about 100 degrees climbing some of those mountains. So I'm not sure, we're going pretty slow, so I don't think the chin splitter can be attributed to that, but I think this coolant being kind of done would uh, play a factor in that. So we're gonna continue doing this. First look underneath the truck with that bottom cover gone. These do not look good at all. These are very rusty. And I believe these are the trans cooler lines because they go up and over. So that's a bit of an unfortunate discovery by every stretch of the imagination. 
because if these pop and puke out all my trans fluid, I'm down a transmission. So I'm gonna start doing some research on how to replace these. That's unfortunate. Anyway, moving on. So apparently this is the passenger side of the radiator. This little petcock is how you drain it. So we're gonna blast the cap off. This thing is totally cold. I haven't run it at all. We're gonna blast the cap off the radiator and open the petcock and just let her drain. So because I didn't raise the truck up at all, we're just using this little uh, tote bin to catch all the coolant coming out of the petcock. Is it gonna hold the 12 liters? I can assure you, I don't know. Okay, that's off. It's a lot dirtier than I thought it was gonna be. Okay, let's go get this thing out. All right, so our petcock is here. Is it easy enough to turn by hand? No, it is not. Okay, attempt number two. Let's just make sure I get cool and everywhere. Uh, oh, okay, it just keeps turning. There we go. mind these petcocks but they do make me a little nervous after a while it's got plastic bottom tanks and end tanks i think on this thing the bmw has proven that those will definitely hold up but i don't know man these little petcocks they make me nervous i think if i own this truck long enough to do it again i would probably just pop that lower rad hose off hoses themselves seem like they're fine though no real cracking or nothing like that big old fan on there though Nobody the first to admit it. I never met a corner I didn't want to cut, and I was really hoping that I wouldn't have to do the coolant flush on this. But here's what came out of the cooling system. There's a lot of pretty, pretty angry-looking chunks in there. Obviously, some of those are bubbles, but eh, seeing what came out of there, I want to make sure that we get it all out. So I'm gonna refill this thing with distilled, run it up to temperature. So the thermostat opens, sucks in the distilled water, let it cool off again, drain it back out, and let's see how much worse it is. Because I want to see if we get more chunks out like this. Because those are probably like, you know, pretty important stuff that maybe could be a, an indicator of something really, 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 really bad about to happen. So let's see. I also pulled this out of the tank, the expansion tank. Uh, it's a little dirty. I'm not sure if it's oil. Inside of the tank overall is pretty clean, but you can see. So you can see on the inside of the tank here, there's a bit of a scum line here. You can see just down in there. I don't know that we're full chocolate milkshake mode yet, but uh, I'm not really liking the looks of that. So definitely time for a flush. Okay, filling her up for the flush. Just straight water to the floor. Apparently it's quite a process for these to burp themselves all down. And they will burp. A lot of burping, a lot of farting around. Well, I'd say overall it's still not enough in there, but that's all I can get out of it. So I'm gonna start it up, crank the heat, and just kind of watch the tank, see what happens. You're supposed to run this with the cap off until you start to see the upper rad hose start to get warm. So we're gonna do that for a little while. The heat is fully cranked on here, and we'll just see what happens. Here's the tank. Looks like we got a small return from the engine. Our upper rad hose is already hot. We got very hot air. About, I don't know, 80 degrees. I'm not the biggest fan of getting scalded, so I think that's good enough for me. I'm gonna drop the coolant out of the bottom, see any more dirt uh, comes out, and see how pink it is still. Scratch that. I started taking the water out of the radiator, and it was still like barely warm. So obviously didn't run the truck enough. So let's try this again. So we're now just starting to see some uh, return from the tank. This is from the engine, and this is from the tank. We're just starting to see a little bit of coolant come back from the rat. It's just starting to get warm on this hose right here. So we'll continue to see what it does. Get some flow through there, not crazy. But let's get it up and really circulate. 
Okay, take two. We got up to temperature for sure, but everything else is, is pretty hot. So we're gonna pull her apart. So the result of the flush is more stuff has come out. It's a little bit alarming. The color is definitely getting a little bit lighter on this one than the original. That was the original. Here's what we flushed out. Now my real dilemma is, do I flush one more time to do it fully complete, but then I'm out of distilled water, or do I just mix it up, call it good enough? All right, so here's my rough math. I drained approximately, let's call it seven liters out of this thing. Let's say the block holds about five liters. I drained that, replaced that with distilled water, ran it, and then drained another seven liters out of it. So I think I did an incomplete job on the flush on the actual engine. So that means I need to put roughly six liters of straight coolant in. So I basically put an entire jug in already. So I'm most of the way there and I've diluted the other one quite a bit. So I'm quite certain if I put this in, we'll have about a 60, 60, 40 mix in here. At least that's what I'm hoping for. Come talk to me in the winter. Basically what I'm trying to avoid is getting a less than 50, 50 mix in here because she do be getting cold in the winters here. We're going for a 60, 40. All I'm doing right now is just squeezing the rad hose. You can see all those bubbles coming out of there. What seems to work best is if you just squeeze and hold the upper rad hose. That's all I just did. Alright, start her up, run it up to temperature, and see what happens. Alright, hot, we're pressurized. We've got our fan on back here. The truck's been running for, well, 15 minutes. We are right at operating temperature. So I think that's gonna do it for this episode of Steve Does Stuff. Got about a 60-40 mix of straight coolant and distilled water in there. Should be good for the next five years. Hope this helps somebody out there. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.